Hello, and welcome to the last part of this six part series on sustainable agriculture. So now I'm going to be talking about agricultural future, the future of sustainable agriculture. And I have identified six sort of factors that I think are really important in terms of determining the future of sustainable agriculture. And essentially, sustainable agriculture will depend on these factors. So these are the first is supporting the long term well being of farmers and farm communities. The second looks at ensuring that farmers have the markets that they need to sell their products at reasonable prices so that they are able to invest in sustainable farming futures. The third is to provide tax structures and policy incentives in order to encourage and support diverse agricultural production and family farms. The fourth looks at bolstering community food security, including community and home gardens, farmers markets, the use of fresh local farm produce in, in school meals, and also in local cooperatives. The fifth looks at adapting a circular economy mindset, which I'll explain a little bit more about that, what that is. And the last looks at data and imagery for more so and advanced technologies in terms of providing a more system for helping to produce a more sustainable farming future. So I'm going to go into all of these in a little bit more detail. Um, the first, looking at the long-term well-being of farm communities, this means addressing the question of social equity, which is really critical for sustainable agriculture. And farm, farm wages, or wages for farm labor, particularly in industrialized countries, is so low that the agricultural sectors really rely on migratory labor from poor countries. The farms are therefore vulnerable to changing migration policies in countries. But perhaps a lot more importantly, uh, farm workers are vulnerable to exploitation. And farm workers often experience low pay, poor standards of living, a lack of opportunities for upward mobility, and also unsafe working conditions with little to no government, government oversight. So in order to ensure sustainable and just farming futures, these issues really need to be addressed. And measures need to be taken to improve the living conditions for workers and to secure a more reliable work for them. They also need to be given opportunities through education and through healthcare and also the chance to become farm owners themselves. I believe that the future of sustainable agriculture means that social justice concerns must be addressed and that starts at the farm and with farm workers. The second looks at ensuring, well, the second point that I wanna make looks at ensuring that farmers have the markets they need to sell their products at reasonable prices. And this is critical in order to ensure that they have money to invest in sustainable farming futures. So there needs to be long-term predictable markets for farmers. And as, as, a, as consumer demand for sustainable practices increases, society also has a responsibility to help farmers build these systems. So, what we see is like the consolidation of food manufacturers, marketers, and suppliers means that farmers have been have lacked the economic power to negotiate better prices for their crops and their input. And that is the case in the case that I discussed earlier about Indian farmers. So working bonding themselves together in, in production or processing and marketing cooperatives is one way for these farmers to increase their relative economic power in the market. They can also increase their share of market value by performing some of their processing functions on farm before they sell their products. They can also produce high 
high value specialty crops and they can build direct marketing opportunities and look for niche markets for their products. Governments also, though, should consider the ways that they could restrict consolidation in big business in order to help farmers in the long run, because it, it is nearly impossible for them to, to be able to get a fair price when there's monopolies in some of these markets. So the third looks at tax structures and incentives in order to encourage diverse agricultural production and family farms. So due to the economic pressures on, on farmers, rural communities have really become poorer across the board and farms and the agricultural related enterprise that go, that go with them are going out of business in many countries. So economic development policies then are needed, including tax incentives, to encourage these more diversified agricultural producers, particularly on family farms. And alongside that, um, and although this may be somewhat limited, consumers also have to play a role through their purchases. So consumers basically, they're able to send a strong message to the producers and to retailers about what's important to them. And that means that they can send a message about what environmental values are important to them, but also social values as well. Also, governments can also provide support to farmers in the form of improved transportation. They can provide reduced crop insurance and also research programs that can help farmers. Um, the fourth that I wanna look at is bolstering community food security. And these are th through things like home gardens, farmers markets, and, and other maybe food cooperatives. So many of the pressures that the economic pressures that hurt on farm sustainability also have created social equity concerns for consumers in low income communities. So this is, this is because low income people often have really low access to healthy food through supermarkets. And supermarkets will sometimes altogether leave these low income neighborhoods to move to higher income neighborhoods in order to increase their profit margins. Food production and marketing arrangements can be used to help these communi community food security. And these measures could in include things like community and home gardens, farmers markets, and using fresh local produce in school meal programs, but also in jail programs as well. And also encouraging local cooperatives for buying and selling food. The fifth um, involves adopting a circular economy mindset. So to meet the, and this is kind of related to agroecology. So to meet the needs of the population and, and address environmental issues, farms need to have this holistic approach to their production systems. And that means that they need to look at it in, in terms of their, all of their management practices when it comes to their crops, livestock, and selling their products. Um, so this circular economy mindset means that farmers are thinking about how the whole farming system and farmers are already really expert at reusing resources and reducing waste in their businesses. And they already do things like reduce reusing water on dairy farms or using byproducts in commodity crops in, in, in for other purposes. And they also use methods to fix nitrogen through crop rotation and now more recently through no-till farming, which has become hugely popular. So also by applying the principles of agroecology, farmers can help advance this circular economy, which is very important. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is the use of information and the use of new technologies like data and imagery. 
So today's farmers, they have a wealth of data and imagery about their farming operation. And farmers can now use high frequency, high resolution satellite imagery to monitor their fields. This can also allow farmers to mitigate pest problems and, and address other yield diminishing problems that they may encounter. Farmers can also make more informed decisions about when and where to grow crops and what crops to grow. So combining technology and hands-on management will substantially, substantially, substantially improve sustainable management practices on farms. And when these types of positive changes are made at the farm level, we really see an impact move throughout the whole food system and therefore benefit everybody. So thank you everyone for listening to this series on sustainable agriculture. I really hope you enjoyed it and you learned a lot. And I look forward to your comments, questions and critiques. <laughs> thank you so much. Have a good day.